Hi, my name is Bahad Rahmedev. Welcome to the course of Biophysics 1. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the ACG or the electrocardiogram. So the meaning of the ACG is coming from its name. Since the gram stands for the visualization, electro stands for the electric conduction, and the cardio stands for the heart. So the electrocardiogram means visualizing the electric conduction inside the heart. So you've probably have seen this kind of animation before. So we call this as ACG, so visualizing the electric conduction of the herd. And throughout this lecture, we're going to try to understand what does it mean every single wave inside these figures. So in order to start, we need to look to the anatomy of the herd, first of all. So previously, we talked about the anatomy of the herd from the ACG perspective, from the perspective of the electric conduction. So we've seen that the uh, the action potential, which is created at the SA node, which is the main pacemaker of the herd, which is basically creates the beats, is going to move through all of those parts, through the AV nodes, through the uh, AV bundle, through the left and right bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. So as it moves to all of these parts, it basically depolarizes the cells, and the ACG actually is, uh, is going to trace this de depolarization through all of these parts. Okay? So at some point, the, all the cells on the heart are becoming depolarized, and then suddenly it becomes repolarized. If you don't remember what does it mean, the depolarization, let's look to this in more detail. So let me remind you what does it mean. So we're going to look to one of the cells of the cardiac muscle. So the cells of the cardiac muscle are called the myocardiocytes. So uh, the, the action, so th there is something which is called the membrane potential. So the membrane potential basically measures the difference of the charge between inside and outside the cell. So the rest, so the uh, charge outside is more, so that is why it's positive, and charge inside is less, so that is why it's negative. So whenever we have we see this kind of figure, so we usually say that hey, it's negative, it has negative membrane potential inside and positive membrane potential outside. So through this lecture, we're going to try to always leave this membrane potential word. We are just going to sell that it's positive inside or negative inside. But you need to try to understand that it means we're talking about the sign of the potential member. So the rest, it is negative inside and positive outside. So when the action potential happens, or suddenly it might become different. For example, it be, may become like a positive inside and negative outside. So this process is called a depolarization. So positive inside and negative outside. So after, after a while, it may suddenly change to the standard position when it's basically negative inside and positive outside, and it becomes to the resting position again. So what I need to do is, so you, you can see here, the depolarization is basically changing the signs inside and outside, right? And this depolarization it basically moves across the cells, and we would like to trace this movement. So I would like to look to the chain of the couple of cardiac cells, her cells, uh, cardiac muscle cells, and I would like to trace this depolarization by just putting the two electrons, the positive electron and the negative electron. So at the rest, all the cells are going to have the negative inside and positive outside. And when the depolarization happens, we're going to have negative outside and positive inside. And again, so after repolarization, we are becoming to the standard position. So now what I would like to do is I would like to start depolarization and try to hold on when it reaches the middle of this chain. For example, when it depolarizes until the half of the cells, and now I would like to measure the charge difference. So the charge difference is basically measured using a dipole. So the dipole is going to be represented as a vector, which is going to tell us how much the difference between the, of the, of the charge. If the charge difference is higher, then this vector is going to be longer. So that the magnitude of the vector is going to be uh, larger. And if the charge difference is smaller, then this vector is going to be shorter, or the magnitude of this vector is going to be smaller. So this dipole vector is always going to move to the towards positive outside. So you can see from here that you have the positive potential membrane outside the cell. 
and this dipole is going to move in that direction. So now if we see that the dipole is moving to the direction of the positive electrode. So that is why if we measure this, we're going to have the positive dissipation. So now, so after this couple of moments, the whole part of this chain is becoming depolarized. And now if you measure the charge difference, you simply are going to get zero. There is no charge difference, right? So that is why you're going to simply have the horizontal line when you measure the charge difference. So after a while, we are going to have the repolarization process when the cell is becoming to the normal position, when we're going to have negative inside and positive outside. So let's hold this on again so at, when it reaches the half of the chain. So now when it reaches the half of the chain, where we have the positive outside charge. So the positive outside charge is here. So it means that our dipole is going to move in that direction, right? So the positive outside. So again, if you look to the vector dipole, it moves to the direction of the negative electrode. So it, on a paper, we are going to have, again, the dissipation, but the negative dissipation. So we're going to have the negative charge difference. So this is how it works, actually. So how we are going to basically trace the depolarization using the two electrons. But everything is not so simple as, as it might seem to you at the first glance, because if I start moving this chain, so uh, rotating this chain, so measuring the dipole is becoming more difficult. So actually, we are also, in this case, in this example, we've got the chain of the cells which are located on the lead. So the lead basically is something which connects these two electrons, for example, the positive electron and the negative electron. So they are connected, for example, horizontally, and we've got this chain which is also horizontally. But let's look to the example where this lead is not horizontal. So if it is horizontal, then it's super clear, right? So we are going to create, draw a dipole vector, which is going to move towards a positive outside, right? Then we're going to see whether it looks to the plus electrode or it looks to the negative electrode, minus electrode. Then depending on that, we're going to draw a dissipation. So now let's, let's say that this chain is moved. So it's, it's basically is not, on the on basically on the road between the two electrons right so you can just imagine that you can put the two electrons to your right and to your left chest then you can just try to measure the electric conduction of the herd which is like a moving diagonally right so it appears when you're going to have this kind of situation what you need to do is you need to basically draw a projection of this dipole onto the lead so here we are going to have the lead, which is going to be horizontal, right? So now what we have to do is basically we need to do a projection of this vector onto the lead. So the projection onto this lead is going to be this vector. And this is basically a smaller, is, is, so it's, its magnitude is smaller than in our previous example. So that is why we are going to have, of course, the dissipation, but this dissipation is going to be shorter, smaller, okay? So again, so if you are going to move this to the right or to the left, for example, if you move this until the vertical position, you are basically going to, you're not basically going to uh, be able to measure the dipole. So since the, so the dipole is going to move vertically, its projection onto the lead is basically going to be a point or just simply zero. So it means that, so you can see from here that there is a charge difference, but we're not able to measure this using these two electrons. So this is the reason in particular why we have lots of electrons in order to measure the electric conduction of the herd. So we basically are going to have the six electrons. So we're going to call them the, the roots which connects them are going to be called as a lead one, lead two, and lead three. So it basically this part is going to be your right, uh, your left, um, your left arm. So this part is going to be your right arm and this part is going to be your left leg. So you're going to put the positive and negative uh, electrodes to the different parts and then you're going to measure the electric conduction through your heart. So in this lecture we're going to try to concentrate on this lead T. So basically we're going to see how the things are going to depolarize 
and try to basically always project everything to the lead to vector, so to this vector. So negative here and positive here. So negative on your right arm and uh, positive on your left leg. Then, so then every, so every time when we have this dissipation, the upper goes or it goes down, it means that the charge, the, the depolarization is moving to the plus sign, to the plus electrode, or to the negative electrode. So let's look to this. So this is one of the most important parts of this lecture. So now, when the signal or the action potential is created at the AV node, uh, at the SA node, it's going to move in a different directions. But the mean vector is going to move in this direction, which is the same as the direction, or more or less the same as the direction of the lead T, right? So the lead T, as you remember, is the basically the vector which connects the negative electrode with the positive electrode. So since this is going to, so this is, we are going to have the movement in, this, in the same direction, in the direction of the plus, um, we are going to have the positive dissipation. So now when the, the signal is moved, uh, moved from the SA node to the AV node, it's basically holding on there for a while. So we need to so have this system. So the contracts, the atrium contracts, then the reticular contracts, then it relaxes, right? So between the contraction of the ventriculum and the, uh, the, ventriculum and the atrium, we're going to have this small gap. So roughly for the 0 0.1 milliseconds. So there is a contraction, uh, but it's so slow that we are not be, be able to see this on, on a graph. We're going to basically have the horizontal line. So this horizontal line, it basically, uh, it's called the PR interval, and its meaning is, say, how long, um, so what is the time difference between the contraction of the atrium and the, uh, and the, and the vent ventricular? So it's also important. So depending on how the length of the PR intervals change, we can try to figure out what kind of diseases we're going to have. So now, so now the signal is going to move in this direction through the, um, the bundle branches. For example, it moves through the bundle branches and the signal is going from the left ventricular to the, to, 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 to in, the, in this direction. The reason for this is that, so the left ventricular is basically is bigger than the right ventricular. So if it is moving in this direction, so the AP is moving in that direction, um, now I would like to try to understand what kind of dissipation we are going to have. In order to do this again, if you remember, so if the um, dipole vector is moving in the different directions, what we have to do is we need to try to find the projection of that vector onto the lead, right? So the lead, which is, uh, which is, which is the vector which connects the positive and negative electron. We're going to create the lead. Now we are going to draw this vector, the vector of the dipole here, so now we need to find its projections. So the projection is going to be this red vector. So when this red vector is looking for, so this vector, so this red vector is looking at the direction of the negative electron. It means that we are going to have the negative dissipation, right? So we're going to have now the negative dissipation and this wave is called the Q wave. So now what we are going to do is we're going to move the signal across, uh, so through, the, the, through the AV branches, uh, bundle branches. So here, when it moves to here, so we can see that lots of uh, dipoles are going to move to the direction of the positive electron. The thing is you're going to have here the movements in this direction, you're going to have the movements in this direction, but since, the right, uh, t the left ventricular is bigger than the right ventricular, so the mean vector is going to be is going to look more towards to the uh, to the left, so more towards to the positive. So again, so this part of the herd is going to be bigger than this part. So that is why the amount of the charge which is generated here is going to be greater than this part. So obviously the mean vector, if you, if you look to these two vectors and these two vectors, is going to be more uh, towards to these two vectors. So these vectors are looking to the positive electrode. It, it is going to create, again, the positive dissipation, right? 
on our paper. So this positive dissipation is going to look like this. And this part is going to be called as the R wave. So now the signal is going to be transmitted to the direction of the Purkinje fibers. So they are moving in that direction, right? So the dipole is moving in this direction. So if you try to draw this as a mean vector, so the, all the vectors are going to be uh, in the direction of the negative electrode, right? So whenever we have the dipole, which is moving uh, to the direction of the negative electrode, we're going to have the negative dissipation, right? So here we're going to have the negative dissipation and this part is going to be called as the S, S wave. So now, so everything is becoming to the, um, more or less to the stable position. So now if you look to the heart, so the full of, uh, so all the parts of the heart are um, depolarized. So it means basically positive inside and negative outside, right? So it's basically contracts. So all the parts are contracting. So the atrium contracted, then a, uh, the ventriculum contracted. So before it basically goes to the rest, if you remember the action potential of the cardio muscle cells, we are going to have this plateau section, right? So when so everything is holding on in this position, so basically the membrane potential is going up, then it's it slowly so it, it goes down a little bit, then it moves in the in the positive membrane potential for a while, right? So so th there will be a, a small time when everything is going to be in this to, in in this position when everything is going to be depolarized. So this interval, so, so this time is going to be measured using the ST interval. So the meaning of the ST interval represents the plateau uh, process in the action potential of the myocardiocytes. So if you remember again, so the, so the potential membrane increases, then it, if it decreases, then it's going to hold on a bit, right? So this position is called the plateau, and this ST interval is going to represent the plateau. So one, once everything is becoming repolarized, we're going to have a, a, a little bit movement, so the dipole movement in the, in the positive electro direction, and we're going to have the positive dissipation here. And this part is going to be called as a T wave. So this is the whole uh, essential structure of the AKG. So one more time, let's review this. So the P wave is basically going to represent the movement of a signal of the AP from the SA node to the AV node. Then PR interval is basically meaning how long the signal is moving from SA node to the AP, uh, AV node, or basically how long it's going to stay inside the AV node, right? Then the Q wave is going to be uh, the movement of a signal through the, uh, the bundle branches, right? So when they are going to move through these bundle branches, the uh, dipole is going to be in this direction, which is going to have uh, more movement towards to the negative electrode. So that is why we're going to have the negative dissipation here. So then we're going to have the R wave. Then we're going to have the S wave. Then SD interval basically represents the plateau of the action potential. And the T wave, it basically represents when the, all these cells are repolarizing basically relaxing of the herd. So this is the basics of the ACG. So in our next lectures, we're going to try to do a, a little bit calculations using this, this waves.